Euclidean geometry examination questions grade 11 and grade 12. Euclidean geometry examination questions grade 11 and grade 12. Here is a very good example for 10 marks of an examination question in Euclidean geometry. Uh, let's go with it. In the diagram, circle QRS is tangents PQ and PS. PT is parallel to RSR with the T on QR. Now, the most important part of geometry is that the question will direct you in some way. When you read the question, there are some certain words that will indicate to us the theorems that are being tested by that particular question. Words like the center, the tangent, uh, cyclic quadrilateral, parallel lines, those are important terms in geometry. So before you start worrying about these marks and what is there, look for it first so that you may not get stuck. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to do exactly that. Look for information in the diagram that can help me answer the question. What do we have? We are told that there are tangents. Okay, so tangents, two tangents are given. What do we know about tangents? We know that tangents from same point are equal from where they touch to where they touch the circle. So that means in this diagram, the angle at Q, Q1, and angle S1, they are equal to each other because of the tangents from same point. Those two tangents make the triangle PQS, PQS an isosceles triangle. That is what we have been able to establish. Apart from that, if you take this code here and one of the tangent, we can see that the angle at R is an angle in the alternative segment. So that is the tan code theorem. We can now see that we have been able to establish two angles that are equal to x using the first part of the information given tangents PQ and PS. Let's proceed. What else do we have in this diagram? We are told that uh, line PT is a parallel to line SR. Now, you look at your diagram, look for the line SR. So this is my line SR. Look for the line PT. This is my line PT. Those two lines are parallel to each other. We have to be very careful because they did not indicate on the diagram that the lines are parallel. But it is written there that line PT is parallel to line SR. Now, what do we know about parallel lines? We know about alternating angles. We know about corresponding angles. We know about co-interior angles. And we have to now figure out, out of those three angles that come from parallel lines, which ones are applicable to our situation and our diagram, so that we can be able to use that to answer the question. Now, if you look at the position of angle uh, T1, angle T1 in relation to angle R, you can be able to see that they are forming the F shape, which means these two angles are equal because they are corresponding angles. That is coming just from the information that is provided. So when I get my diagram, what do I do? I must look for information. I also have got alternate angles here. So if I take this angle here, that is a T2. I can see the Z that I'm forming. Uh, those two angles are equal to each other. They are alternating angles. So once I establish that information, 
it becomes easier to answer my question and put up together what is required. Now, there is my Z angle. What I need to do now is to see how I can put this information together and be able to come up with the answers that are required. Now that we have put together the information we need, we can now uh, put our answer together. Uh, take notice, it is always important to have a look at the question carefully before you answer it, so that you don't get into the trap of trying to solve a puzzle without enough pieces. We have established that Q1 and S1, those two angles are equal to each other, tangents from same point. Then Q1 and angle R are equal to each other, that is the tan code theorem. Then T1 is equal to angle R, that is corresponding angles. And that answers the first question. So we can say that Q1 is X, turns from same point. R is equal to X, tan code theorem. And T1 is equal to X, corresponding angles, because line PT is parallel to line SR. Then the second question, we need to prove that uh, PQTS is a cyclic quadrilateral. There are three ways in which to show this. The quadrilateral given, you look at the opposite angles. If they add to 180 degrees, then it is a cyclic quadrilateral. You, or you look at the exterior angle, is, if there is one, if the exterior angle is equal to the opposite interior angle, it is a cyclic quadrilateral. Then the third option, you look for angles in same segment. That will be, uh, uh, that will show us uh, that the diagram is a cyclic quadrilateral. So there are three things. Opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180. An exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the opposite interior angle and angles in same segment. So in this case, we have angle T1, which is equal to X, and we have got angle S1, which is also equal to X. And therefore, we can say that the diagram PQTS is a cyclic quadrilateral. This is the converse of angles in same segment. That is what we uh, that is what we have. If you look at the uh, the diagram, consider this angle T1 and angle S1. You should be able to see uh, that those angles are forming uh, the diagram that shows angles in same segment. Angles in same segment look like this. So if you move from point P uh, to S and then to Q, then to T, and then T is somewhere there, back to P, so something like this. So at this point, that is where we have angle T, and this is T1. And at this point, we have angle S, and this is, uh, uh, this is angle S, and this is S1. So if these two angles are equal, then we have got the butterfly shape that shows angles in same segment. And therefore, PQTS is a cyclic quadrilateral. And that is what we have used in number 2.1. Especially if the mark allocation is this low, uh, think about this one. Then the last one. We need to show that the value of angle S3 is equal to angle Q1. Um, now, we have uh, shown this already, if you look. But let's put it together. Uh, angle T2 is equal to angle X. Now, look here. In number 2.1, we have proved that PQTS is a cyclic quadrilateral. Now, in number 2.2, we can use the diagram PQTS as a cyclic quadrilateral because it has been proved that it is a cyclic quadrilateral. And that is why we are now able to say that uh, angle T2 is equal to angle X because if you follow this line, uh, you are going to see 
uh, this diagram again at angle Q1 and also at angle T2. So this angle here is equal to X. That is angles in the same segment. Then we have got S3. The value of angle S3 is also equal to angle X because angle T2 and angle S3 are alternate angles. They are equal to each other. And uh, that completes the question. S3 is equal to Q1 because the Q1 has already been established to be equal to X from turns, um, from turns uh, drawn from same point. That answers question number 2.2. .2. And eventually, our entire question has been answered. So putting the answer together becomes easier if you have looked carefully at the information that is there. Angles in geometry, they normally link to each other. One will lead you to two, to three, to four. So you need to find the first ones according to the hints that are given in the diagram. And once you do that, it becomes uh, nice to be able to answer everything else.